Well, hello. If you took a train trip in the 1930s or 40s on a branch line of the Great Western Railway in the west of England, chances are you rode in one of a pair of coaches known as a B-set, hauled by a small steam engine, maybe a 262 Prairie type tank engine. Here comes one from the latter part of that period, after nationalisation into British Railways. For less well patronised services, the company introduced the auto train, where the coach had a driving compartment at the far end, so the driver could control the train from either end. This made it much easier to turn the train around at the end of the line. The next step in economy was to mount an AEC diesel engine under the rail car. Because of their shape and maybe also the brown and cream colour, these units earned the nickname Flying Bananas. After nationalisation, these units went through one or two different colour schemes, as we shall see. They could also have an auto coach hung on the back to form a train of two coaches, or even longer. Then came the British Railway's modernisation plan, with the single units of classes 121 and 122 also with AEC engines. These ubiquitous units became known as bubble cars. Then came the infamous Pacers, designed around two bus bodies they were introduced into Cornwall as skippers and painted a sort of chocolate and cream to be reminiscent of the GWR. They did not do well. Their four-wheel suspension did not suit the sharp curves of the Cornish branches and they had to be transferred elsewhere. After privatisation, the new Great Western Railway franchise inherited some of the single unit Class 153s. These had been adapted from the two car Class 155 by putting driver's cabs on the inside ends of the vehicles. By 2020, all the 153s had been transferred to other operators. Now, the smallest trains in the West Country are all two-car units. Well, I do hope you've enjoyed this romp through time at Hexworthy Viaduct. Thanks for watching.